Now this is where we have to be careful because you might say, okay, well then x equals 1. Well, it also equals negative 1, and we need to always remember that if we're looking at square roots, it can be positive or negative 1. So, um, x can equal 1, but x can also equal negative 1. So, since we have both of these, all we have to do now to find the, the uh, potential maximum minimum points is plug these two answers for x back into our relationship that we found. If we plug 1 in, in for here, then y also equals 1, right? So, that means that our points, let's go ahead and erase this here, that our points, um, we said if, if we plug in 1 for x, then y also has to equal 1. So we go ahead and write 1 there for y. If we plug in negative 1 for x, y also has to equal negative 1. So its corresponding point is negative 1. And now we found our two points. Our two, uh, our two points um, that may be maxima or, or minima in our function are 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1. So let's go ahead and um, write those up here so that they don't get in the way. We've got 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. So all of that work to find uh, our two potential points. Oftentimes you only have one point, in this case we have two. So we've got two points, and now what we need to do is evaluate them. We need to find out if they are in fact, um, if, they, if they represent a local maximum or a local minimum. And the way that we do that is by taking the um, second order partial derivatives of the original function. We actually don't need the partial derivatives of g anymore. Um, so we need to take the uh, second order partial derivative with respect to x. So that looks like this, x squared. And then we're going to take second order partial derivative with respect to y, um, and we're also going to take the mixed derivative. Okay, so the second order partial derivative with respect to x, we took the first order with respect to x, so we're going to take the derivative of this again with respect to x. The derivative of this with respect to x is just 2, as you can see. And then here we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to y, which is also just 2. And then for this one, the mixed, we, um, we have two options. We can take the derivative of um, the partial derivative with respect to x, but with respect to y the second time. Or we can use the partial derivative with respect to y and then take the derivative of that with respect to x. They should be equal. So it doesn't matter which one you use, um, but if you're going to use x, you then have to um, go with respect to y. If you're going to use y, then you have to go with respect to x. Let's just use the, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x here. And so we have to take this uh, with respect to y. Of course, there are no y's in here, so this is just going to be 0. Remember before we said you can plug in a constant for... Um, for the number that you're holding constant, for the variable that you're holding constant to see. So if we're taking this with respect to y, we're holding x constant, so we could plug in, for example, the number 2 to x. If we plugged in 2 here, we'd get 2 times 2, which would be 4. And of course, the derivative of 4 is just 0. So this ends up being just 0. Now that we've found these three second order uh, partial derivatives, we can um, we can use, um, and we actually don't need these anymore, we can use uh, the following test. Um, and this is just a, a test for maximum and, and minimum points. Um, the test looks like this. It's d of um, x, y, lambda. And this is a complicated formula, but it, um, it's really pretty unnecessary. So, um, x squared, and then y squared minus mixed and squared. Okay, so 
to test this, what we do, um, we use this formula. So basically this is um, this times this minus this squared. So we've got uh, 2 times 2 minus 0 squared. Um, the second order partial derivative with respect to x times the second order partial derivative with respect to y minus the mixed second order partial derivative um, squared. You can see the squared here. So 2 times 2, we've got 4 uh, minus 0, so it's just 4, and 4 is greater than 0. So let's go ahead and write up here so we don't forget d equals 4, which is greater than 0. So that's the first thing. We have to use this formula, um, x, y, and mixed squared, to, um, to find out what, um, what we get here and whether this is um, greater or less than zero. So we've got um, that that's greater than zero. And then, the, finally, the last thing that we need to do is look at the uh, second order partial derivative with respect to x and evaluate it at the, uh, at the point, um, one negative one. So, um, so in this case, um, in this case, um, it's just 2, so um, we can't plug in a point at all. So 2, so the uh, second order partial derivative with respect to x is 2, which is also greater than 0. Um, so because both of these are greater than 0, um, and this is something that you would also want to memorize or write on a formula sheet, um, if d is greater than 0, and the second order partial derivative with respect to x is greater than zero, then um, the point is a local minimum. If this is greater than zero and the second order partial derivative with respect to x is less than zero, then you're looking at a local max. If this ends up being less than zero, then um, I think it's a saddle point, which is like an undetermined value. Uh, it may not be a max or a min. You have to do some other things. So. Because these are both greater than zero, um, both of these points, um, 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1, are local minimums. So, we're, so our final answer would be um, local min uh, at 1, 1, and local min at negative 1, negative 1. And that's your final answer. Thanks, guys.